Amid ongoing talks between NATO and Russia, Denmark has decided to increase its military presence in the Baltics as a show of support against Russia's aggressive behavior. After consultations with the country's foreign policy board, the Danish government agreed on 10 January to send naval frigate Peter Willemos with 160 soldiers, four F-16 fighters, and 70 men to the Baltic region. Arriving in January and operating under NATO's command, the Danish fighters will be deployed in Lithuania, while the frigate will be used for patrolling. Both the frigate and the fighters will remain in the area for at least three months. Danish Foreign Minister Jeppe Kofod said, this sends a strong signal that Denmark is taking co-responsibility for the alliance's collective security. We, together with NATO, are ready for a constructive dialogue with Russia so that we can find possible diplomatic solutions, but we must take our precautions. The Defense Ministry has previously described the Baltic region as Denmark's own backyard and one that poses one of the biggest challenges to the country's security. Denmark has deployed some 200 soldiers in Estonia as part of NATO's advanced defense. Denmark has decided to set aside 22 million euros to help Ukraine boost its defense capability in its border region with Russia. The Danish Foreign Minister Jeppe Kofod visited the border in the eastern part of Ukraine, where Russian forces are assembling. He told media that he was appalled at how the ongoing situation in the eastern part of the country had manifested itself in the region. He said, Ukraine is acutely threatened by the massive and unheard of a military buildup by Russia near the Ukrainian border. The government will not sit idly by and watch. Our new aid package is comprehensive and every step is needed. We are hereby sending a clear signal regarding our solidarity with Ukraine. The Ukrainian people will know that they do not stand alone in their fight for sovereignty and independence. We must support Ukraine and its right to be a democratic country in its own right. That is why we are now strengthening our Danish contribution to Ukraine's reforms of its security forces. We are also increasing our contribution to Ukraine's military training and our assistance in bringing Ukrainian military personnel in line with NATO standards. I will not leave out further contributions. Furthermore, the Danish Ministry of Defense announced that it will send the Ivia Hupfeldt class frigate and four F-16 fighter jets to NATO's Standing Naval Force and Sovereignty Enforcement in the Baltics. According to the ministry statement, the Danish government has decided this after consultation with the Foreign Policy Board. The Danish contribution will be under NATO's command but will focus on the Baltics. The Royal Danish Navy frigate HDMS Peter Willemos will be ready for deployment from mid-January and the four F-16 fighters by the end of the month. The contribution with the frigate Peter Willemos is for NATO standing naval forces, where in addition to the already registered contribution of three months, Denmark offers a frigate for another three and a half months. Danish Defence Minister Trine Bramsen said, We offer a strong and sought-after contribution to NATO by sending a frigate with 160 soldiers and four F-16 fighter jets and 70 men. That an almost unified Danish parliament is behind this is an important and clear signal. The Ivia Hupfeldt class is a class of 138-metre-long anti-air warfare frigates, built by Odense Stahlskibswerft for the Royal Danish Navy. Three have been built and all of them were commissioned in 2011. On the other side, the Danish ambassador to Estonia has said, Denmark is responding to Russia's actions on the Ukrainian border by strengthening its defense capabilities in the Baltic Sea. Ambassador Kristina miskoviak bekvard said the offer of additional forces was well received by NATO. She said, there is very strong support in the Danish parliament for all efforts in the Baltic Sea. Many times we have seen unity on this topic in Denmark and this is, of course, because we are talking about our own security interests too. We are talking about our own neighborhood. She pointed out that the step is needed to show NATO's unity and to counter Russia's aggressive actions near the Ukrainian border. She said, we are currently seeing aggressive and threatening behavior from the Russian side and indeed actually since the annexation of Crimea in 2014, so we are maintaining our defense. We are only responding. Estonia's Minister of Defense Koli Larnit told the Danish proposal sends a strong message to Russia. Although Russia's goal is to divide the Allies, Denmark's decision shows the opposite. The minister said, Russia must understand that NATO and also its allies are ready to show solidarity if they decide to attack the Baltics. 
he said negotiations are underway to enhance NATO security forces on the eastern flank but could not give any more information. Speaking about Washington's commitment to the region and the possibility of a compromise between Russia on security issues in the Baltic states, Larnett said he did not think this was a possibility. He said, I believe that NATO is united, the United States is one of NATO's most important countries, as are Estonia and the other Baltic states. And as long as NATO is united, I do not think it is possible to discuss such proposals at all. These are completely unacceptable proposals. The minister said is convinced the US is committed to protecting the Baltic states. On the other side, the Danish Defense Intelligence Service has claimed in its annual risk assessment that Russia is intentionally spying on Denmark, including phone tapping, hacking, and more traditional espionage tools like recruiting sources to divulge secrets. The report also underscored Moscow's military dominance. Anya Dalgard Nielsen, an intelligence service official, stated that there is a serious threat to Danish organizations, authorities, and some Danish businesses. In comparison to previous releases, this year's report lays a larger emphasis on Russia, which is perceived as posing a threat to Denmark in other areas as well, such as the Arctic, where both countries have territorial claims. According to the report, the Russian military is of a very high standard and in some areas, they are even better than modern, high-tech opponents. According to the Danish intelligence community, Russia has now gained parity with NATO in several sectors following five years of military rearmament and modernization. Russia has a great distrust of the West, according to the Danish Defense Intelligence Service, which raises the possibility of an unintentional escalation. We are concerned because the Russian leadership has a deep mistrust of the West and its motives, which could lead to misunderstandings and inadvertent escalation, Dalgard Nielsen stated. She further stated that Russia is presently the strongest country in the Baltic Sea and would have an advantage in the case of a confrontation since it could block NATO countries from sending reinforcements to the region. The report also said foreign intelligence services, including from China, Russia, and Iran, were trying to make contact with students, researchers, and companies to harness information on Danish technology and research. It is significant to mention here that this isn't the first time Russia has been viewed as a potential threat. Sweden and Finland have often expressed concerns about Russia's military modernization and made similar espionage charges. Sweden's Navy chief, Ua Skughaslam, described Russia and China as the two biggest threats to the Scandinavian country. Notably, Russian-Danish relations have deteriorated as a result of mutual accusations and criticism. In November, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova alleged that the Danish justice system follows the country's general Russophobic trajectory. On the other side, Sweden, Denmark and Norway signed a defense cooperation agreement in last September in response to the growing tensions in the Baltic Sea and apparent Russian aggression, but Finland's absence from the deal has raised a few questions. The three-state agreement mainly serves the needs of non-NATO member Sweden, which has neglected military buildup and practically dismantled its defense forces after the Cold War. The agreement is necessary due to Russia's readiness to use military force to reach political targets. On Finland's absence from the agreement, Defence Minister Antti Kaikkonen justified it by pointing to the Danish Straits, Kaliningrad not being on the country's doorsteps. A similar defence cooperation agreement was previously signed between Finland, Sweden and Norway, while Finland also has its own bilateral agreement with Sweden. It is time to share your opinion. Should Denmark worry about Russia?